And there's been fresh fallout today over the shock decision by the police watchdog last night to put the Metropolitan Police, Britain's biggest force, into special measures. Fresh row exploded between the government and the Labour Mayor of London over the huge force's multiple failings and who's to blame for them? The policing minister, Kit Morehouse, accused Sadiq Khan of being asleep at the wheel. Meanwhile, the mayor, Mr Khan, said the government is attempting to distract from a decade of failing to grip the force. The Met has faced months of anger criticism of a series of scandals from its handling of the murder of Sarah Everard to major questions about its culture. Well, Talk TV's political editor Kate McCann joins me in the studio with a new line on this story. Kate, good evening. What have you found out? Evening, Tom. Well, yes, this is a huge political row now. The fact that the Met is in special measures is significant. There have been a number of failings and criticisms over the last couple of years that the Met Police have, in this report, failed to deal with. But I have to say, we still haven't actually read the report because it's not been published. My understanding is it was due out in September. That is now being brought forward. But today in the House of Commons, Kit Malthouse, the policing minister, made two significant interventions. The first of which is essentially to say, unless Sadiq Khan, who has overall control over how the Met behaves in London, how it polices London, unless he gets a grip of this situation and quickly, that potentially there could be some changes to the structure. Now, what that means in reality is that the control, who has control over the Met Police, could be taken out of the hands of the mayor. Now, that would be incredibly significant. There is a special measure procedure for doing that if changes don't happen quickly enough. But for a minister to say that in the House of Commons just shows you how difficult a situation now the London mayor is in and the Met Police too. Mr Malthouse also had a warning for the mayor himself on a personal note. Just have a listen to that exchange in the Commons before, Tom. I held the job of Deputy Mayor for Policing uh, myself for four years. Um, I feel very strongly about this issue, so I apologise to you. And I feel very strongly because had I been in a position uh, that the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor are in, I have to tell the Honourable Lady I would have considered my position after six years of control of the uh, force. Now, we also found out today there are six forces currently in special measures around the country, a number of other large forces who are being looked at in some detail because of the way that they are policing and ultimately failing. That is the biggest number of forces ever being looked at by the inspectorate for failing to police properly. Now, that's wow. really significant. It shows you that this isn't just a problem that is being faced in London. It's a much broader problem, too. Some of those forces, Greater Manchester, for example, do police a large area and have some really significant issues to deal with. So it is something that the government and now the Mayor of London are going to have to grips with. Uh, Sadiq Khan says that he has been trying to do something about this, but he's been hamstrung, essentially. But I think for a different perspective on this, we are now joined by Palm Sandhu, who is former Chief Superintendent of the Met Police, and Stephen Roberts, the former Deputy Assistant Commissioner of the Met. It's lovely to have you both with us this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Kate. Now, look, you both accept that there are failings within the Met Police, but you both come at this from a very different angle. So, Palm, just starting with you first, you experienced both sexism and racism, I understand, during your time in the Met Police. Is this a cultural issue, do you think? I think it's a major cultural issue that has been going on for many, many years, and it hasn't been gripped. And the, one of the reasons it's not been dealt with is that the Met Police refused to acknowledge that they had a problem. And in recent weeks where we've had the inquest into the Stephen Port murders, um, there's more and more evidence and information coming out. But unless, you know, unless you actually say you've got a problem, how do you even find a solution? And I welcome the intervention from HMI, HMI CFRS. And Stephen, you come at this from a different angle. I mean, what's your take about why this is happening now in the Met? I think it's evidence of a real crisis uh, brought about by a number of challenges that the Met's had to face. Uh, and tipped over the edge by, by the pandemic. But I'm afraid it happens right across the criminal justice system. The, the courts are in a mess. Uh, the Crown Prosecution Service is massively underperforming. The police are underperforming. Uh, th this points to me like a, a failure of stewardship of the criminal justice system altogether. That, that's no excuse for the individual failings within either the Met or any of the other police forces. But it has to be seen within that context of budget cuts back in 2010, which cut 20% out of the budgets of large police forces. And 
What, what that meant was a forced restructuring, a loss of experience, personnel and expertise that takes years to replace. It, it's no coincidence that it's the major metropolitan forces that are suffering most mm. from this uh, because they have the biggest social problems to deal with. And the intervention of politicians the way it seems to have happened today is really rather unhelpful. What we need are politicians who are prepared to unite on a common purpose of certainly getting the Met and the other big city police forces back in line, mm. back performing as they should and as they can. But, Palm, that's, that's quite difficult to do. That accountability is quite difficult when these forces are all essentially accountable to different places. There is an argument, some say, that the Met is a law unto itself and that now is the time for the Home Secretary to take control to really try and grip this issue. Do you think that's the right move? The Met have, have had failings and that, those failings have been around vetting, they've been around stop and search, they've been around their attitudes towards diversity in, in its whole. And, you know, they've got lists and lists of online child abuse victims that haven't been dealt with. They're not dealing with the 999 calls properly. Now, we can't put that down to politics. That is lack of leadership within the Met Police. And at the moment, there is a vacuum because the commissioner um, was forced to quit um, a few four months ago. And in that time, there is no good, clear leadership of the Metropolitan Police. So those failures are getting worse. Mm. You know, we've had Sarah Everard. Wayne Cousins was allowed to join the Met, even though his nickname was the rapist in another force. So I don't actually agree with what Stephen has said. I, I feel you know budget cuts have had an impact but not in the in the way that we are seeing this lack of um control lack of um leadership and the actual service that we're providing to members of the community and stephen just very quickly the final point to you there is a question now over whether actually this is a much bigger issue about what the police can and crucially can't now do do you think that's fair Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that's part of the, the agreement and the common purpose that has to be forged between the Home Secretary, between the Mayor and the Mayor in London, and between the new Commissioner, whoever that happens to be. Morale within the Met has suffered grievously uh, as a result of the way that the previous Commissioner was removed from office. The political tensions between a Socialist Prime Minister and a very Conservative Home Secretary could hardly have made the situation worse. And, and to end up with a, an almost accidental and certainly surprising resignation of the commissioner, that, that can't help but have a major impact mm. on not just the senior officers in, in the Met, but the junior officers. Cresta Dick was held in very high regard by officers of all ranks. And to see her treated in the way she was uh, as damaged the morale and thus the operational effectiveness of the Met. Stephen Roberts and Palm Sandu, thank you so much for joining us today.